But, but it must be really like that if the projection comes from you, you are the only one that can withdraw it. You would have to take that back. So, so taking back your power, your power that you've given to everything you see, you have to take that back into the quantum field and say, well, whatever I have put out there, I withdraw that back into where it never came from. <coughs> In case you didn't hear that, that's what that's the key point. If I if I threw it out there, I must have the power to with, to bring it back to withdraw it. Mm -hmm. Or in the Course in Miracles, it says, "I have done this, and it is this I would undo." Done this, mm -hmm. I have done this cosmos, <laughs> and it is this cosmos I would undo. You can forget about you know, did I make this one pregnant? Did I murder somebody? Did I? Uh, live a good enough life, was I a good enough son and a good enough daughter. Look what this, this kind of thinking does to family relationships. You know, think how much guilt is associated with family relationships. Was I good enough? Was I a good enough son or daughter or a niece or nephew or on and on, or, or father or mother, you know, from that perspective. All this stuff about family relationships from a quantum perspective, is a bunch of hooey. Family dynamics, uh, you know, being, being a good, having a good family, having a good wholesome family and everything. If everything is the unified field, then no wonder there's all this guilt about family relationships and dynamics, and especially around, you know, interpersonal relationships, is because it's all made up. It's all total fabrication. No wonder there's guilt about it. That, not that guilt's natural. The unified field isn't going, I am so guilty for being one. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't have that experience. Do you like light bulb? Switch it off. Switch it off at any moment. Any moment you can. Any moment that you want to. <laughs> but it, it was very touchy, or like beautiful to see the crystals of the water. Yeah. So when you treat with love and not love, yeah. the difference. Yeah, we talked about uh, the idea that it seems like thoughts can be made manifest, and and that particular sequence, they were talking about random generators and how just the intention to have more ones can bring about more ones, or just thinking about water molecules and then the different pictures just showed it. Mm. So, so that brings back, that just shows the power of thought. But also, in the end, where could that power of thought lead you except to the quantum field? You know, back to to what's real, what's unified, the abstraction. So, that's one of those stepping stone ideas where you start to see, wow, I can, if I'm thinking thank you, or thinking I love you, or the chi of love, that's a pretty interesting snowflake, <laughs> a picture of, of, a, of a water molecule. And when I hate you, I want to kill you, you know, you saw what that looked like as well, then, he says, if this, if we, if our thoughts can do this to water molecules, imagine what they can do to us. Imagine what they can do to my perception of the cosmos. If I'm holding on to hatred, grievances, if I'm holding on to, you know, that idea of separation, then I will see a fragmented cosmos. Not that it's real, but that's what I'll perceive. Yeah. Huge implications. Mm -hmm. Imagine growing up with a science teacher when you're six, when you're sixth grade or something, or when you're in high school, and you get this as a presentation of science. Well, that will that will have an impact. <laughs> 
still, it still seems like there's a mixed message there. You know, sometimes it's like this stuff it's just mind blowing. Like, you know, yeah, none of this, none of this matters because we're just a unified field. We really aren't any people here and whatnot. And yet, it's 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 kind of fun, and it's it's definitely where the mind is going. But then there still seems to be these, you know, practicalities. You know, in terms of living with what seems to be a body in the world, and sometimes I feel like we, we hang around in that area of you know mind blowing stuff, and still um, there needs to be a bridge to where we are now. Yeah, I think of course that's what my seeming life life's work has been. It's it's all on the internet. It's all there. The bridge from human being to divine reality is is a beautiful. It's not a real journey, but it's a, it, metaphorically it's very helpful to go from things. We were up at, at Gordon's land today, and he was he just given us this beautiful tour of his property and eating the fruits and and being in the flow and out in nature is pristinely quiet. You were there. And then with a twinkle in, the, in his eye, he says, I have no bills. <laughs> now that's practical. Uh, if, if I looked at you and I said, imagine if you could live in a, in a state of mind where you didn't have any bills, any bills to deal with. Uh, that's a practical kind of thing. Without getting into quantum physics, you know, you could say, well that feels, just the sound of that feels pretty good. My shoulders are, are relaxing a little bit. Ah, ah I can breathe a little deeper uh, if, I, if it's a practical reality. So that's, that's like a step. Now, now, no bills, you know, by itself, you know, you have to go into what is it? If I'm living in a state of harmony, if everything is becoming so simple and easy, and I'm experiencing the quantum field and the flow of all that is, then that is very simple and very practical. But if I believe in ego constructs, uh, lack, scarcity, uh, oh those bills are going to... Bills in general. Bills in general. Yeah, the concept of bills. If I believe in the concept of bills. If I have no bills, but, but there, I perceive that there's others that do have bills. Oh, that's a, that's a killer. <laughs> you know, or that thing of possessions, you know. Uh, St. Francis was, was big on no possessions, you know, in Assisi and everything. But if you still believe in the concept of possessions, that'll sink your mind right back down into the illusion. So it, it literally has to become, I think Keith's question is, that it all sounds really good and very high and beautiful, but practically speaking, what about the things that I have to actually deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? That's really the question. And what I say is, in the end, time itself, time and space, and the day-to-day -day is, is even up for grabs to be to be questioned, you know. <coughs> when does a day begin and when does it end? Uh, what about these artificial increments of time that we call days and weeks and months and hours and minutes and seconds? What, what does a second or a minute or an hour or a day or a week or a month or a year or a decade or a century or a millennium, what does any of that really, really have to do with the quantum field? Nothing. What about spatial things? About Europe and America and Australia and Asia, all these different continents, continental drift and all these theories about how the continents drifted and everything. What's that have to do with the quantum field? Nothing. What's all this struggle about interpersonal relationships? Are we in a relationship or not? Is it a good relationship or not? Do we have good communication or bad communication? What does all that have to do with the quantum field? Nothing. You start to get a sense that the only practical thing is the quantum field. And you start to get in your mind that everything else other than the quantum field is by 
definition irrelevant. Why? Because it's, it's a hallucination of fragmentation. 